Okay, greetings everyone. Welcome to Gerard Black and the Philippines with the truth. I'm gonna welcome you to my channel, all my subscribers, all my peaches, triggers, lovers, haters, commenters, each and every one of you, I welcome you to my channel. And let's not forget the scallywag. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. I was gonna use the mic, but I want you to hear in the background the water, because that's where I am, I'm right here by the beach. Uh, 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 yeah, here, let me kind of see back there. Kind of give me an idea of where I'm at. Uh, okay. It's a beautiful, 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 beautiful Filipino, Philippine morning. Okay. So there. Ah. So you got an idea of where I'm at. You know, um, you know, it's it, it's funny that um, you know, uh, I, I speak a lot about what's happening with me. You know, I speak about relationships that that are that I know about because I'm in it. Or I speak a lot about my personal relationships with girls, you know, um, and their children. You know, um, I know me and I, uh, <laughs> we were hitting a rough patch, but, you know, uh, I had to uh, uh, nip some things in the bud, <laughs> you know, and, and spoke about some things to her about what this is really about, our relationship. Because sometimes you got to redefine the line of everybody's part that they play. Because if you don't redefine the lines, uh, it, uh, people have a tendency to get displaced. You know, uh, you know, uh, they, you know, they tend to fall off or, or whatever. You know, um, one thing I know about relationships is that whatever you do in the beginning of the relationship you should keep on doing you don't stop you don't stop you have to be consistent consistent is a key word when it comes to relationships because that's what you got to be uh, for instance I had a girlfriend uh, she was Spanish and uh, she had uh, a boy and a girl and uh, uh, every morning you know uh, I used to come by her house and <laughs> when she saw me coming on the block I was riding a bike Everybody always knew I was coming because I'm playing music and I'm singing. I had a friend of mine who said, Gerard, I know you're coming. I hear you about a block away. <laughs> you know, and even here, even here, I play my music all the time. People know that's Gerard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that. So when she heard me, she she would take off her top and press her breasts up against the window. I can see if I can find that picture. You know, I've seen it in my, in my files. But uh, uh, I'll see if I can put, If I do, I'll put it right here. <laughs> and you can see it and um, anyway so every morning when I came over she used to give me uh, a glass of crystal light crystal light is like a, a juice drink like this it's it's not kool-aid it's crystal light it'll be a little more healthier for you or whatever and she would put ice in it and it was you know very refreshing after my after my bike ride you know uh, to come there and have that glass of uh, crystal light and she would do this every day, every day when I, whenever I come by. And then one day I came by and she gave me the glass. And I, I, I know it's not leveled, I can see it, but it's okay. You know, and she gave me the glass. And I looked at it like this. I looked at it like this. I looked at it like this and I held it up like this. And I'm, I'm looking at it like this. And she said, what are you doing? I said, baby. There's no ice in it. Something in her mind, in my mind, something in my mind said, fuck it, I'm not putting no ice in it today. You know? So I pointed, I, uh, so I said, what's wrong? Something is wrong. Because you chose to change. You chose not to give me or, or uh, the same treatment as you always gave me. What's going on? Uh, and uh, but she had stopped being consistent 
Uh, uh, that, that, that was the thing. I'm not going to go much further now. You know? And uh, when I had two kids, I used to take them to school. Uh, drop them off at the daycare. The three of us. I mean, the four of us. And when they got out of the car and took them inside, we had two car seats in my car. I would take the car seats and put them in the trunk and close it, you know? And one day she asked me, how come you always put the car seats in the trunk? I said, well, the reason I do that, because if by chance one day you saw me and you didn't see the car seats in the back seat, you would swear I had somebody else in the car. That's how women think, you know? So it was a preempted, you know, uh, consequential thinker that it's just best to take the car seats out every time the kids got out of the car. You know, so that was my way of nipping something in the bud that, that you know that might come up that that probably was untrue, but what was going on in her mind. So the, the, uh, the thing I'm talking about is consistency in a relationship. And my thing is that if you don't know what to do to me, do what I do to you. You do to me. You know, if I suck on your big toe, you suck on my big toe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you get my drift. If you don't know what to do, just do what I do to you. So anyway, so uh, so we were kind of off tilt, and um, um, uh, we had a conversation. It wasn't a conversation. Me is very hyper, you know, uh, and I understand that, you know. Hey, hey, little ugly dog. <laughs> no, I got no food for you, ugly dog. There, look at this little ugly dog. Hello, little ugly dog. <laughs> I don't know if you see him. Okay, so anyway, so uh, so we were having this conversation, and oh well, and she's holding, you know, she's holding Duchess, and and I said, calm down, man, calm down. You're holding my baby. I don't want that energy if you're going into my child. So anyway, so 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 we finally got it out, or all out. We redefined the lines and let everybody know what part everybody's playing, which was good. But before I even started the conversation, I asked the boys, look, you guys go get on your bike and go for a ride, you know, because I'm going to have this conversation with your mother and you don't need, you don't need to be in a room. You don't need, you don't need to hear the things that <laughs> was going to be said or whatever, you know, you know. <laughs> I know my, my daughter, Janelle, when she get crazy and beside herself, start yelling, I just, ugh, I just grab her and squeeze her, hold her, and say, let me go, let me go, let me go. I said, no, no, no. You calm down first. You calm down. And it's the same thing that works with me out, you know, sometimes when she got to that point. And then at that point, I would lay down in the bed, we'd be face to face, and then we'd be talking, and then eventually I'd get a little smile. And, and then, you know, whatever it was that we were mad about or we talking about is, is gone, you know. And then it turned into something else. But, um, so, um, we had this conversation with the boys in the house. And I'm conscious of that because, you know, we're talking about an adult thing. See, I learned that's not the thing to do around children. That's what messed up my kids' life. You know, my mother, the mother of my kids yelling and screaming at me and all this stuff, even on the phone. I can always tell when the kid's are in the room because, you know, she'd be on the phone. And I said, the kids are there. She said, yeah. And then when they're not there, she's purring like a kitten. How are you? Like this. I said, and they learn a lot of what they shouldn't have learned through her anger and through her yelling. And that formulated, played a crucial part in how they looked at me. And so... Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, what happened was that uh, after the conversation was over, you know, uh, uh, everything was calmed down. You know, uh, Mia was in the kitchen and the boys were in the room, so I go up behind her and I hug her and, and grab on her and all this stuff. Like, stop, stop, stop cooking, stop, stop, like this. And, you know, because, you know, I, I wanted to show the boys, you know, uh, uh, affection. You know, I wanted to teach them that, okay, although you may be angry or you may have a, a, an argument, but at the end of it, you should still be lovers. You still should be with each other. And, uh, and that's what I was teaching them. I was teaching them how, you know, you know as, as loud as it got, had gotten or whatever like this and, and uh, 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 
But after it was all over with, look, oh, they're fine. Yeah, they love each other then. And um, uh, I spoke to them and I told them, I, I said, look, I'm sorry you had to hear all that. But we, you know, we were talking about a lot of uh, adult theme uh, uh, content, stuff that they, that they didn't have no business here. Or, you know, know what it is that I want their mother to do for me. <laughs> Every three days. Should, those three days should pass without tapping that ass. <laughs> so, so, so they heard all that, whatever, you know. Uh, so um, uh, I apologized to him. I said, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you guys had to hear that. I said, hope next time we have a conversation like this, you will, uh, uh, will ask you to go ride your bikes or something so I can have this conversation with your mother. Because I know how it's going to go. You know, hey, like this. And, um, you know, uh, you know, and that's that's what kind of got me, you know, turned off about black women was because of how my mother was, how how mean and nasty. my mother, I see my mother, you know, beat men with, with empty vodka bottles, running out of the house bleeding and all this. I was traumatized. I was, I was traumatized about black women. Like, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't want to have nothing to do with you witches. <laughs> so, uh, uh, although that and the part and the fact that that whoever it was that came into my life, you know, that, that you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I, you know I, I ended up being with, you know, regardless of color. I remember I had this one black girl her name was Valerie. I never forget her, Valerie. Valerie was tall. I used to have to stand on two steps in the hallway to kiss her. <laughs> You know, and and uh, uh, when they would go home, you know, she would sit by the window, and the brother would sit behind me. And when she say goodbye, brother would like, spit at spit at me. I mean, God damn. It was crazy, but uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, that, that that was my my first black girl. That actually, you know, um, uh, we uh, had a relationship. I had a, a boyfriend girlfriend relationship with you know, you know, and just just the words, you know, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, the other day, there was a girl, a woman who came over to our apartment, uh, to our house, and um, and uh, Raphael was out there with me, and uh, she was going in, and uh, and I looked behind her, and uh, I went, Raphael, <laughs> like this. He said, "Huh? <laughs> I said, oh, forget about it. <laughs> you ain't ready for that." She had an ass like no tomorrow. <laughs> I said, oh, "Forget about it. You ain't ready for this yet, young man, young scout. You ain't ready to." understand the beauty and, and wonders and, and the magnificence of a woman yet. The essence of a woman you're not ready yet. <laughs> you know, if I got to explain that ass to you, well, you know what, you're definitely not ready. You're not definitely ready. But uh, it, was, it was funny, uh, I, I don't know if, if, I, if I said this before, but um, um, there was uh, one of my nieces, had told me, I think I may have mentioned it, I'll tell you it again in case I did. If you heard it before, just hold on and, and it'll change. For those of you who didn't hear, that uh, uh, they were over and my little cousin came, my little niece came over me and says, uh, Raphael has a crush on a girl. And <laughs> I, I'm thinking, well, I'm glad it's not a boy, <laughs> you know, so, so uh, 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 she was trying to tell me, explain it to me, do I like this? And so, so anyway, so uh, I saw Raphael, I said, oh. I heard you got a crush on the girl. He said, oh, she told you. I told her not to tell anyone. I said, ah, you learn now, young scout. Girls cannot keep a secret. <laughs> so that, you know, that's pretty much the uh, um, um, what's going on in the house with me. So um, with her and I, me, uh, 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 since that discussion we had, and since the few days that have gone by, you know, things, things have, are, are better. You know, it's, it's better. You know, it's something like, it's, <laughs> there's something about stopping a Filipino and attracting, hey, come here. You know what I'm saying? Come here, I want you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> with no hesitation, no, 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 no second thought. I mean, if it's Johnny on the spot, and I say, yeah, this is what it's all about. Yeah, this is what life's all about. You know, whenever whenever I'm in the mood, you know what I'm saying? And I really wasn't in the mood because sometimes I'm just testing her reaction. Uh, you know, most of the time my foreplay is to let her know it's coming. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Like this, you know, get a mind in, in, uh, in that frame of mind. Yeah, well, you know, I got to give up the booty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, 
um, I might say something like, uh, oh yeah, oh, 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 oh you want it? Uh, later. Uh, that's okay, good. As long as you know you're going to get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you psychologically implant that seed in their head that, that, uh, that uh, sex is going to be coming, you know, and it works out fine. You know, outside of that, you know, living here in the Philippines is fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm posting a couple of pictures of girls who I've seen and all this stuff. And, and the caption that reads, it says, uh, you know, if a man, if a man gets too old, well, he can't appreciate the beauty of a Filipina, uh, um, uh, turn your passport in and go home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, there's a, 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 an old guy just came in. He goes swimming every day. Uh, I, I think he's Australian. I just said hello to him for the first time. But uh, 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 he, uh, he's going swimming with, with his uh, dog and his Filipina, but his Filipino don't go anywhere. But uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, you know, it's, I'm a lot better. I'm in a lot better space now, you know, you know, and, 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 and uh, with that, I, I took a lot off of her, uh, uh, off of her allowance, you know, and she's happier now. Because she was locked out for a while, you know what I'm saying? Till we had that conversation to get everything straight. So it's good, you know. Uh, I figured I'd do something nice for her. So I, uh, uh, I bought a dining room set. You know, we ordered it, you know. We need it, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, and so she's excited about that. And so, you know, um, I, I know a pleasing woman, you know, it's not all about, you know, them pleasing you. But it's also doing something for them. And doing something for a Filipino woman is, is a lot less stressful than trying to do something with a woman in the States. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you know uh, um, so, so um, uh, I, I bought her a, a dining room set. We ordered it, so we're waiting, waiting for it to come. So outside of that, you know, uh, I put the car loan in. I haven't heard from him yet. You know, I'm going to figure out a call today uh, and check it out and see, you know, what's going on with it. But, um, you know, uh, uh, there's not much more to say other than, you know, I'm happy to do these videos here in the morning because uh, not only is it, you know, uh, it's a lot more relaxing I get out of the house uh, since I'm not playing tennis as much as anymore. I've been working on, on getting that six pack. <laughs> okay, so this is Gerard Black in the Philippines with the truth. Remember, dreams are nothing more than plans of winning action. Never disrespect the elderly that pulls them up. And sometimes, sometimes, you're the only one to see your vision. And the best revenge in life is to live good. I'm living good today. I hope you are too. And if you're lucky enough to have a woman like Ali Woodson, former lead singer of The Temptation One Son, treat her like a lady. And ladies, if you're lucky enough to have a good man like me, make him feel like a king, and never say no. <laughs> I've been reading some of your comments. I, I, I thank you for those of you who are commenting. Maybe I will do... Uh, uh, calling all comments soon, but uh, I appreciate you. All right, go out and um, make it the best day in life. I am, I'm living my best life. Ah, I'll talk to you later.